king has been anointed, vested in the colobium syndonis, sleeveless linen tunic, symbolizing simplicity. And then the super tunica, an embroidered gold coat, a form of priestly coat. And then he'll be vested with a girdle or a belt. Receive these spurs, symbols of military honour and chivalry, that you may be a brave advocate for those in need. Presentation of regalia, starting with the spurs, brought by the Lord Great Chamberlain, Lord Carrington, symbols of courage in battle. The spurs made in 1661 for the coronation of Charles II. And the ancient chant begins, the Byzantine chant ensemble, singing Psalm 71, Greek choir, mark of respect for the late Duke of Edinburgh, who was a prince of Greece. The jeweled sword of state, for the first time carried by a woman, Penny Mordant, the Lord President of the Council. Three other swords to the right hand side. Temporal and spiritual justice. And the blunted sword of mercy. O Lord, we beseech thee, and so direct and support thy servant King Charles, that he may not bear the sword in vain, but may use it as the minister of God to resist evil and defend the good. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. a sign and symbol not of judgment but of justice, not of might but of mercy. defend widows and orphans, restore the things that have gone to decay, maintain the things that are restored, punish and reform what is amiss, and confirm what is in good order, that doing these things you may be glorious in all virtue, and so faithfully serve our Lord Jesus Christ in this life, that you may reign forever with him in the life which is to come. Amen. The jeweled sword is now surrendered and then handed back.
president will hold the sword on the king's behalf from now on. Lord Kamal, representing British Muslims, will present the bracelets or armils for the king. Receive the bracelets of sincerity and wisdom, token of the Lord's protection, embracing you on every side. Baroness Merrin representing the Jewish community, comes forward. The Anglican Archbishop of Armagh will present the orb, representing the sovereign's power under the cross of Christ. Receive this orb, set under the cross, and remember always that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Next, Lord Battelle, representing the Hindu community, brings the ring, symbol of the monarch's promise and commitment in this service. Receive this ring, symbol of kingly dignity and a sign of the covenant sworn this day between God and King, King and people. The glove, brought by the Sikh representative Lord Singh, demonstration, the Sovereign's promise to protect the people. Receive this glove, that you may hold authority with gentleness and grace, trusting not in your own power, but in the mercy of God. Receive the royal scepter, the ensign of kingly power and justice. and the rod of equity and mercy, a symbol of covenant and peace. May the Spirit of the Lord who anointed Jesus at his baptism so anoint you this day that you might exercise authority with wisdom and direct your counsels with grace, that by your service and ministry to all your people, justice and mercy may be seen in all the earth. Sacred anointing is done. Presentation of regalia complete. The moment of crowning has arrived. In the chair of St. Edward, and with the crown of St. Edward, King Charles King III of Kings is acclaimed. And Lord of Lords, bless we beseech thee this crown, and so sanctify thy servant Charles upon whose head this day thou dost place it for a sign of royal majesty, that he may be crowned with thy gracious favour and filled with abundant grace and all princely virtues. Through him who liveth and reigneth supreme over all things, one God, 
world without end. Amen. God save the king! The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. The Lord protect you in all your ways and prosper all your work in his name. The Lord give you hope and happiness that you may inspire all your people in the imitation of his unchanging love. The Lord grant that wisdom and knowledge be the stability of your times and the fear of the Lord your treasure. May God pour upon you the riches of his grace bless you and keep you in his holy fear, prepare you for a happy eternity and receive you at the last into immortal glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
and hold fast from henceforth this seat of royal dignity, which is yours by the authority of Almighty God, may that same God, whose throne endures forever, establish your throne in righteousness, that it may stand fast forevermore. So the king has been enthroned, escorted by the Archbishops of Canterbury and York, Bishop's Assistant and the Great Officers of State. Now the Archbishop of Canterbury will declare his loyalty. I, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, will be faithful and true, and faith and truth I will bear unto you, our Sovereign Lord, Defender of the Faith, and unto your heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. Prince of Wales steps forward to give homage to his father, the King. I, William, Prince of Wales, pledge my loyalty to you, and faith and truth I will bear unto you, as your liege man of life and limb. So help me God. I now invite those who wish to offer their support to do so with a moment of private reflection by joining in saying God save King Charles at the end or for those with the words before them to recite them in full. I swear that I will pay true allegiance to your majesty and to your heirs and successors according to law. So help 